verse here. He says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I'm in the midst of them. So it's something that we can look forward to. We can say, Lord, just take over. Just do what you want to have done in this service. Right now, we're going to just have a quick little prayer, and then Bama's going to come up Amen. and give his message. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Kurt for coming for the kitchen every week. You're such a blessing. You'd have been having peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. <laughs> But we thank you, Kurt. Very special. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the people that come every Sunday that are totally dedicated to you, Father God. And Lord, we just ask that you help them each day of their life, Lord God, to be drawn closer and closer to you, Lord. We just ask you to be with Bam as he comes up and says the word yes. right now, Lord yes. God. Yes. And Lord, that many be blessed. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Here he comes. <laughs> Good evening. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Everything is going to be all right. Amen. Thank you for that selection. Amen. Brother Ronnie. Thank God. You know, that was very fitting for what the Lord has put in my heart to talk about today that everything is going to be all right yes sir amen yes sir yes sir yes sir as long as you trust in the lord amen put it all in his hands you know i find myself in a, a place today where i feel like i'm all alone and my world's closing in around me So I have to remember in past times when I was in this place and I put it all in the Lord's hands. Mm -hmm. Cause you see Satan to back you up or lead you down little roads where you feel like there's, there's no hope, mm. where you want to give up. Mm. I found myself laying in my bed this morning, I didn't even want to get up. Mm. Just because everything is closing. I feel like it's closing in around me. Yes, sir. You know, God says to trust in him. Amen. Well, that's so true. I put my trust in someone that I thought was a, a great friend. <laughs> someone that I knew for over 33 years. You know, and I was let down. No. So um, what I'm talking about is there's a so-called friend, as he calls himself, closer than a brother. That's what he tells people. Him and I are closer than a brother. But I come to find out that Jesus is the only one that's closer Amen. than Amen. a brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So anyway, if y'all don't mind, I just want to I just want to talk a little bit. You know, so anyway, me and this brother of mine, you know, we had an agreement that I work with him and help him, and in return, he buys material and work on my house. Mm -hmm. So I got this huge house down on a dead end street, and the roof is humongous. That was his job, to buy the material, the roofing material. So we finally got the roof all stripped off. And there was no work getting done. It was just an open roof. So all the elements were coming into my house. The rain and all these other things, destroying more than what was already destroyed. And it felt it out. We weathered it in, yes felt paper and all that, but as you know, that can't stop the elements. Amen. Only for so long. Amen. You know? But anyway, you know, God had provided that I was able to 
you know, have a little nest egg put away. But then God also tells us that there's a story in the Bible about the talents that, you know, it was no good for the guy that buried the talents. He didn't do anything with them. Mm -hmm. So I considered what I was doing, the little nest egg, the money that I had put up, it was just sitting there doing nothing. So after a while of my roof being open and this closer than a brother friend of mine not doing his part of our agreement, I started spending that little nest egg to buy the materials and pay the men to fix my roof. Well, my roof is finally on. It's beautiful, gorgeous. Amen. But my nest egg is gone. Mm -hmm. And my bills are piling up. You know, along the way, when I was spending this money, here comes Satan again. That money is disappearing. What are you going to do? So I had another friend of mine who I used to run with back in the days. Some of y'all probably heard me speak on this before. Uh -huh. He came down my dead end street in his big white flashy Cadillac with the shiny rims on it and the Vogue tires. He wanted to make me a partner in his business. Uh -huh. Well, Satan comes again. You know you can invest that money and build that nest egg back up. But mm -hmm. well, the old me thought about that. Mm -hmm. But God stepped in. Amen. Yes, he sir. said, who's been providing for you, Marvin? Mm. Who's been making sure that everything went all right in your life? Who's been taking care of your bills? Who's been sending people to help you? So I had to tell that person, no, thank you. Amen. Good for you. I'm going to trust in God. Because I know where that would have led me. Back to a place where I first met God and called on God. That good Lord, if you allow me to see the light of day again, and not look up and see nothing but the sky because there was a wall so high around me uh -huh. that I thought I was in the pits of hell. Uh -huh. All I could see was God's blue sky yes, sir. Yes, sir. for years. Yes, sir. I said, God, if you allow me to see just the trees again, I'll serve you. Amen. Yes. Amen. So anyway, these bills are piling up. I got my son with me. And it's crazy because he woke up the other day and he's in college. He said, you know, Dad, I watch you get up every morning at the break of dawn. You make your coffee and you go to work. He said, I have no excuse. I said, what do you mean? He said, Sometimes I don't want to get up and go study. But he gets up every morning, every day, all day, and he goes to his college, Niagara University, and he studies. He said, I have no excuse. And that meant something to me. That kept me on the path of doing what's right. He's looking up to me like I'm looking up to Jesus. I am his example like Jesus is my example. And I just wanted to take a little time and you know trusting in the Lord. There's a story which you probably all know about or heard it before that is an example to me of how I'm to trust in the Lord. And this story is about a man named Abraham. And he had a son named Isaac. I thought about this story. I put myself in Abraham's shoes. 
and my son, who most of you have met, that I love dearly. God asked Abraham to sacrifice his son to him. So Abraham had to trust and have faith that everything was going to be all right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, sir. I don't care what you're going through. So I want to read this story to you. It says, Abraham's obedience tested. In other words, everything that I'm going through right now, do I take it into my own hands? Do I worry about it? Or do I trust in God? Do I put it in his hands and let him lead my way? Later on, God tested Abraham's faith and obedience. Abraham, God called. Yes, he replied, I am here. Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Merv. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I will point out to you. So according to the Bible, the next morning Abraham got up early. He saddled his donkey and took two of his servants with him, along with his son Isaac. Then he chopped wood to burn a fire for a burnt offering and set out for the place where God had told him to go. On the third day of the journey, Abraham saw the place in the distance. Stay here with the donkeys, Abraham told the young men. The boy and I will travel a little further. We will worship there, and then we will come right back. Amen. Abraham placed the wood for the burnt offering on Isaac's shoulders while he himself carried the knife and the fire as the two of them went on together. Isaac said, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied, we have the wood and the fire said the boy, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? God will provide a lamb, my son, Abraham answered, and they both went on together. God will provide, Abraham told his son. When they arrived at the place where God had told Abraham to go, he built an altar and placed the wood on it. Then he tied Isaac up and laid him on the altar over the wood. And Abraham took the knife and lifted it up to kill his son as a sacrifice to the Lord. At that moment, the angels of the Lord shouted to him from heaven, Abraham! Abraham! Yes, he answered, I am listening. Lay down the knife, the angel said. Do not hurt the boy in any way. For now, I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld even your beloved son from me. Then Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught by its horns in a bush. So he took the ram and sacrificed it on a burnt offering on the altar in the place of his son. Amen. 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 God will provide. Yes, he will. As I said, I don't care where you find yourself what situation you find yourself in, God will provide. Have the faith and trust as Abraham did with his son to go 
and sacrificed his son. Mm -hmm. Believing and trusting that God was going to make a way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't listen to the lies. Yes. Don't be tricked. Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled. Mm -hmm. That's his job. Mm -hmm. Because if he can break you down and have you believe that you're all alone, mm -hmm. that there's no help, that you're doomed. Mm -hmm. That's where he wants you. Because what he wants is what God has placed in us. Mm -hmm. That soul, that spirit. Mm -hmm. We all have it. We all feel it. Yes. We are all children of God. Do you not want the best for your child? God wants that for you. And all we have to do is come to him and trust in him. Don't listen to the enemy today. As I told you, he's backed me up into a corner thinking that I have to do things that I know that I shouldn't be doing. Or where is this going to come from now? How are you going to get this done? I watch my son drive off every morning going to school. I pay his car insurance. I don't even know how I'm going to pay my insurance this month. But guess what? Abraham trusted in the Lord. I'm going to trust in the Lord. Because I know I've been here before. I've been on this road before. Mm -hmm. And guess what? It works out. The good Lord gonna pull right up mm -hmm. and say, get in, my son. I got you. Trust in the Lord. Put it in his hands. Mm -hmm. Smile. Yes. Enjoy life. Mm -hmm. That's why God made us to serve him and to enjoy what he has given us. Don't allow Satan to steal the joy that God promised that he would give us. He knows his days are doomed. He knows he's gone. And he wants to take you, me, and everybody else with him. Sort of like misery loves company. I have just a couple more scriptures that I would like to read to you concerning this whole situation about everything is going to be all right. In John, the book of John, 16, verse 33, Jesus was speaking to the disciples. And this is what he said after a while. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me here on earth. You will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus said that he has overcome the world and all these situations he has overcome them. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. So what he's saying is trust in him. Yes. Been there, done that, seen it. In the book of Luke 16:13. I'm sorry, Hebrews 11.1. 1. What is faith? It is the confidence and assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of things we cannot yet see. So even though we don't see it, that I'm going through this thing. How am I going to get out of it? Mm -hmm. 
God says it's the confidence and assurance that we're supposed to have. That we are supposed to put the confidence and the assurance in him. That is. What'd you say, Ronnie? Everything is going to be all right? Everything. <laughs> Everything is going to be all right. Yes, it is. So when you walk out of here. Yes. And you get to the top of them stairs. Mm -hmm. Just say, thank you, Lord. Yes. I know with you. Everything is going to be all right. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen.